Okay, hello everyone. Gainer here from HDB Upgrading Strategies and welcome to my Facebook Live episode 3636, right? So uh, today's topic is really very interesting um, and it's really about this because currently we are facing this COVID-19, this virus issue. So I was just thinking whether, you know, I think it's timely for me to do this uh, Facebook Live particularly on this topic, right? So the question to you guys is uh, regarding about this current situation, will you actually buy now, right? And I've done a poll and I hope you guys probably can help me. I'll be doing a, a, a poll and you guys can probably, you know, participate. And at the end, uh, I will also show you guys the results, right? So the question is, will you buy now, right? And today is something really very interesting because I'll be going through a lot of decision, a lot of, sorry, a lot of questions, right? Um, a series of questions that I'll be asking you guys because at the end of the day, whether you want to buy a property or you are not keen to buy a property is really a decision based by yourself, right? So uh, what I can only do is I will give you a series of questions and some polls as we go along. And all these questions and poll, uh, you probably can ask yourself this question whether, you know, after going through all these questions and poll, then you will probably ask yourself whether, you know, are you ready or not ready. At the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. Uh, I always share with my clients, there's no right or wrong answers to everything. It's only, uh, you know, how comfortable you are to buy a property today, right? So I will also go through some examples, some analysis and some news articles to show to you guys so that, you know, as we go along, you can probably understand where I'm coming from. Okay, thank you so much. I already seen some people give me some likes, some love and probably you guys, I can also see that you can also, you know, probably, you know, uh, some actually commented. Hi, Gainer. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I will just proceed, right? So the biggest question, question number one, right, is this question. Now, will property prices drop drastically, right? And, and I want you guys to uh, look into this perspective because if you are buying now. So what I'm going to sh do now is I'm going to close the previous poll and I've seen, uh, let me probably just see whether, okay, uh, the previous poll I did is actually, will you buy a property now? So it's a mixed answer. Uh, yes, we have actually 11 votes. Uh, yes is probably you guys will buy. No is I actually have 45%, right? So I have 55% that people will want to buy a property now. And no, 45%, right? So I have a total of 11 votes, right? And uh, I probably will do another one more poll. And this poll is, okay, you just give me a second. Just a short while if I can do another poll, right? Okay, so the question will be, will property prices drop drastically? Right, so it's a uh, actually is a very simple answer. I mean, it's a simple question: yes, no, or probably you feel that you are not sure. Right, and at the end, I also probably show the results as well. Okay, I just created the poll. Right, you guys can also participate as well. Right. Okay, so, but without, I mean, I will still continue. You guys can still do the poll, right? The question one, number one is, will property prices drop drastically? So I want you guys to look into a perspective that you are buying now, but you're not very sure whether property prices will drop, yes, no, or not sure, you know, stuff like that. And what I'm going to share with you guys is newspaper articles, right? So that I can facilitate the way how you guys understand as well, right? Now, the very first thing is I want to show you this article, right? You can see this article is something that, you know, I personally feel that is very important that I want to bring out all these things. Now, the very first thing is Singapore, you know, Singapore private property home prices will tumble, right? And the question is by how much, 
Right, I want to bring this out because if you really see what they really meant, if you read through the fine print is, they actually highlighted that prices in the core central region fell the most down by 2.2%, right? Uh, compared with 0. Point, I mean minus 0.5%, minus 0.4% in the rest of you know, RCR and outside of core central region. So what you're looking is that they are saying that property prices are going to come tumble, what, but the question is by how much, right? The next article I just want to share with you is this, circuit breaker measures to take a toll on new home sales, right? And they are saying that volume, uh, volume falls in March and set to stay low with show flats shut. Right, so meaning to say, why, why, why they are saying that the circuit breaker measures will take a toll on new home sales? Basically, it's trying to refer that there will be no physical viewing, show flats closed, and agents are not allowed to do, conduct any viewings at, as well. So I can, I can. What I want to share with you guys is that you understand probably the past few weeks, the past few months, till even moving forward. It's very frequent that sometimes you will get to see this type of newspaper articles, right? So you will probably be, you know, you see all these articles and then at the end of the day, you probably will feel, hey, should I, will property prices really drop drastically? Yes, no, you know, the kind of thing, right? So that's the thing that it will happen frequently, right? But one thing I want to show to you is this thing, right? This is the private property price index right this is the property price index and i want to show you this thing right and this is 2013 right so 2013 in this period of time government actually announced cooling measures right so if i can probably share with you a little bit about the history from here is the layman crisis drop all the way then it actually went all the way up very steep slope upwards right and that's why government announced the cooling measures and the biggest question is why? Why government announced the cooling measures, right? Because one thing I feel that the government, of course, they want to announce these cooling measures because it doesn't really want the property prices to keep going upwards and then it will be a little bit difficult whereby it will be a very uncontrolled situation, right? Then that's why with the announcement of the cooling measures, the property prices actually went down, okay? So one thing for, from here, we can really truly understand from the government's behavior and how government react, right? This is something really very important that I want to share with you guys, that I want to bring this case, right? And you will understand that government actually, what he re they really wants to do is they want to protect the interest. To protect the interest from prices to shoot up drastically and also it doesn't want it to drop drastically as well, right? So, so this is something I think is important that I want you guys to understand that this is how uh, government actually uh, deals with all the current, you know, uh, how it deals with property market and how they are able to behave and how they react. I think this is important, right? And which is, I want to share with you this thing, how, because this COVID-19 and how the government actually reacts as well, right? You see this one thing, government actually allows us you know, Singaporeans, homeowners to defer home loans, right? This is something, a very new thing that probably I don't think that government has done this before, last time. And that's why you can also understand that government always will try different ways or, you know, understand how the situation like and try to come out very different in innovative ways of how it can help in whatever situation that is coming along, right? And you can see that individual firms can also defer payment of property and business loan as well. This is another thing, another one of the news article whereby is the guideline of how on the deferments of the loan and mortgage payments, right? And you can also see that there's more than 17,000 applicants to defer mortgage payments as virus hits home, right? So you can understand that this is how government also react. This is one of the way how government react to, 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 to see how it can mitigate in terms of property, you know, uh, Singaporeans in helping their home loan as well, right? And this is one of the things I also want to bring out, Yishun EC site tender, right? But the peri tender period was, uh, I mean, it's going to last six months, right? And in normal cases, if you really read through the fine print, uh, the most recent EC land tender closing in March this year for a plot of land in Fernville, actually the tender was period of about nine weeks. Nine weeks is about, what, uh, two months plus? But now, 
they actually allow the tender period to last for six months. So one thing you will understand for sure that government is actually really very flexible in the way how they do things, but they are very careful. And that's where I want to extract this out to let you guys understand, you know, things that what has the government done? Like, uh, for example, they actually allow the deferment of the home loan payment. Even though they tend, they, they, they actually have this issue in EC, they also allow the period to last for six months so that the developers can really understand their finances and plot and see how they can do as well. So one thing is very important that we need to understand that government, how government react and behave, right? Which they really want to protect the interest of Singapore property prices as well. Right, conclusion, government will intervene to protect Singapore real estate prices and that is something I really want you guys to understand as well, right? Um, yeah, okay, I saw someone, they say, they asked me, hi Gainer, what do you mean by drop drastically, right? Drop drastically as in, depends on how you look at it, probably, you know, I don't know, few percentage points, some people, drastic is dropped by a huge amount, why I say so? Because now these days I've listings and some buyers come in and you know they have this common question: Is the owner urgent to sell? You know stuff like that. So it really depends on we are referring to HDB, we are referring to private, and it also depends on what type of property that you are buying in terms of price tag as well. So the the term drastic it depends on how you look at it. But for me, Mao is like maybe what I don't know 30, 40, 50 thousand. I'm not too sure, but it really depends on how you look at it right and i want to share with you this thing is about this buyer and seller mindset right this is the buyer mindset and this is the seller mindset and the seller i'm referring to can be private resale or it can be developers as well right now one thing for sure we definitely understand buyer always wants to buy low and the seller always wants to sell high right of course at this current situation uh, I don't think the seller will be looking to sell high. The seller will be, you know, probably looking at what is current fair valuation or, or depends on how they look at it, right? There's one thing we need to understand also the bias factors, right? Uh, depends on whether you're buying for own stay, right? Depends on whether you're buying for your own property investment and eventually also depends on the price stack that you are buying, right? It can be for probably you want to buy a $1 million over dollars property for upgrading, it can also be a property that you want to buy, can be 3, 4 million or even up to 10 million. So it all depends on the price tag, high or low, you know, stuff like that. And also we need to understand what are the factors, you know, for the sellers to drop price, right? So there are a few factors that we are looking at. The number one is, is it urgent to sell and are they affected by crisis, right? The second factor is, of course, we need to understand whether the seller's mindset, it can be a resale owner, it can be a developer, whether do they have the holding power? And that's very important, right? And lastly, of course, if let's say we are talking about private resale owners, sellers, right? Are they actually now currently, they are the properties, they have its own stay, which is they also want to sell, right? So the, or is it an investment that they are holding? So these are some of the factors that you need to understand whether will sellers eventually drop the price, right? And I want to share with you this also in depth. Um, and you must understand that there is this thing called the seller's price gap, right? What do I mean by that? Uh, for example, the private, uh, it can be the private seller or it can be the developer. They buy the they bought a property at the price, right? And this is the current profits that they make, right? The profits that they want to make or a current or, or probably you are talking about a current resale owner, private resale owner. They, bought, they already bought at this price for this particular property and this is their capital uh, gains that they have, right? And this is the price gap. It can go up, it can go down. And this is the price gap that you want to negotiate whether... Um, uh, whether can you buy at a much cheaper price. And we are talking about this gap. It can be up, it can be down. And that's why if the price gap is short, then probably there will not be much price reduction as well. Meaning to say if the owner bought at this price and probably their gap is, they only make very little amount of profit, we are talking about the price gap. And if the gap is short, 
then you probably don't have much price negotiation or price reduction as well because if it's going downwards that will be highly unlikely right this is something really very important for you guys to understand the seller's mindset the seller's price gap as well and i want to give you an example right this example right this uh this example i want to quote is uh under the developer one right uh previously there's this place called sims urban oasis it was actually the land was actually sold in uh, 2014 right and and i want to show you this thing that the break even price that the sellers need to sell is around 1127 dollars per square foot that is their break even price right and of course, after you add all those land costs, uh, the marketing costs, the uh, building costs, you know, stuff like that. And this is actually, after you add everything, this is the uh, break-even price. And you need to understand one thing, 2014 was probably around here when they bought the price, bought the land. And they start to launch in 2017 and it is actually around this period of time whereby the price really dropped all the way to the bottom right and and honestly speaking for the developer to make some profits if i'm calculating 10 percent profits 10 percent profits for the developer to make some profit will be one point they have to sell around 1200 over dollars per square foot if they want to if the developer wants to make 20 percent profit they have to sell around 1300 over dollars per square foot right and you need to understand that they launched during 2017 when 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 it's opened up for buyers to buy right during this period of time and it was the market low at the end of the day the question is did the sell did the developer sell much lower or probably at this price so you must understand the price gap for the seller and and for this instance is the developer they bought at this price they're break even and they need to sell to make this profit 10 percent and 20 percent so they can only go within this range right and and you will understand that this is 2017. This, these are all the transacted, these are all the new sale. And you can see that the sellers, I mean the developer for Sims Urban, they actually sold around 1,300 over dollars and there are some even 1,400 over dollars per square foot. Because you must understand that they want, they at least have to make around 10, 20%. And even when the market was at the bottom, they are still able to make uh, these profits at 20%. And that's why we must understand at the end of the day whether the developers can hold right of course if if the developers can hold then of course they can they can sell around this profit but of course the developers they can't hold then that's a big question mark because at the end of the day we also need to understand from the developers point of view they bid for the land that's really very expensive they are going to spend so much amount of huge sums of money to get the labor costs you know building costs and also the marketing costs you know stuff like that at the end of the day they won't want to sell uh, development and without making any much profits as well at the end it's proven they also sell around 20 percent profits and these are all the transacted prices during the new launch sale at the when the market is actually at the bottom so this is something i want to explain to you about this price gap right and till now since urban oasis this is the recent uh in 2020 you can see that resale the owners actually sold and it went all the way up to thousand five hundred over dollars per square foot, right? So the owners who bought during then, uh, they bought at thousand three hundred over dollars per square foot. Now, if they sell, they still make some money. Some, they still make some profits, right? You know that's something I want to share with you guys, right? So at least you will understand the first thing whether you know whether the price will drop drastically, you know stuff like that. At least I want to give you guys, uh, 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 um. Uh, 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 clear understanding right that's why the first question is how much uh, price do you think it will drop and and if i really look at it let's probably look at it at the poll right okay uh, we have total of 18 votes right regards about will property prices drop drastically right and of course we have some 11 percent uh, they actually highlighted that yes prices will drop drastically and there are 67 percent that they say no right of course 22 over percent not sure right of course i do understand at this point of time we especially for some buyers we are also really very not sure whether will prices go down go up you know stuff like that and so this is definitely a fair answer as well right and now i want to ask you the next question right 
and let me close this poll and I will create this another poll. This question is very important, right? And the question is, how long will COVID-19 last? Right? Is it one year? Or probably is it two years and above? All right, okay, give me a second. Create. Okay, this is something really very interesting because why, if you are a buyer today, right, I think this is something you also need to ask yourself personally, whether what do you think at this current situation, right? Do you think that uh, will COVID-19, the virus, actually uh, last for one year? Or probably you feel that it's two years and more, right? So the poll is up. You guys can also participate, right? So let's say we look at the first scenario, right? But of course, we also want to have this. I just recently, I saw this news article. I don't know whether it was it today or a few days ago, right? Let's say we talk about scenario one, right? Scenario one. So we can see that Singapore to start gradual easing of circuit breaker measures as COVID-19 community cases decline, right? So you can see that we have a falling number of community cases. Singapore is in a position to start gradual easing of circuit breaker measures, you know. So you can understand this, how also government react and behave, right? They won't straight away release and everyone, wow, so happy, you know, we can straight away after, I think, what, 1st of June, we can all go out and enjoy our lives, you know, stuff like that. But they will probably do it gradually, right? This is how government reacts, right? And if, the question is, if government really see, uh, gradually see, uh, ease the circuit breaker measures, right? The question is, so scenario one year, if really does that, what is the seller's mindset? Now, if you are a buyer, right, and you want to buy a property, and you personally believe that, okay, COVID-19 will probably just last around one year. So as we come back, this is the factors, seller drop price, urgent to sell, either whether they have holding power, whether they are own stay or investment, right? So we have to understand one thing. If for this one year, if you personally feel that um, COVID-19 probably will last just one year, then you must ask yourself this question. If sellers and developers can tie through one year, right? Do you think the prices will go up or do you think the prices will go down, right? And of course, I have no right answer, although I put that the prices will probably go up, right? Sorry, I go back. But it really depends on you, right? Because at the end of the day, what I mentioned is no right, no wrong. But if I am a seller today, if I own a private investment, which I have, Right, if I feel that COVID and, and, and now I can sell, for example, I can sell my private investment. And if I personally feel that if the virus issue will not last more than one year or just one year, then if I don't have the urgency to sell, I have the holding power, then most likely I want to tie through this because I will believe that after this, this uh, COVID-19 issue over, I strongly believe that property prices will go up. Why? Because it doesn't make sense that if government, because that is where governments wants to slowly build the economy back up. And if you are the seller, would you want to drop your price or would you want to increase your price or would you just want to maintain and slowly, gradually see how the things, uh, how, how, or probably you want to balance things up, right? That's very important. Now, this is the first scenario. Scenario number one, which is the seller mindset, which is if you feel that the COVID-19 will probably just last for one year, right? Uh, of course, I see the, there's some, uh, Jerry, Jerry, you're asking me whether got anything that's lesser than one year. Uh, I, I, I mean, I just want to put one year. Lah. I mean, I don't want to put six months, seven months, you know, we don't know, but we just put for one year because I think it's fair to look at one year because uh, I don't think that after just one year, the economy can straight away poop all the way up, right? So we just need to give things a gradual, slowly, slow pace, right? So I put one year, right? I didn't put less than one year. <laughs> but thanks for, for giving me that suggestion, right? So we look at scenario number two. 
So if, if scenario number two, right, which is if COVID-19, the virus, really lasts two years and more, right, and if let's say we really look at it, then more or less, I think it will be something really, really very serious. Depends on how you guys look at it. It can be a crisis, right? So the question is, if you guys think that as a buyer perspective, you think that, you know, COVID-19 will probably go for two years and more, then to you probably will be a crisis. And then we look at a scenario now, right? Now scenario now, of course, you are the seller. Now the urgency to sell definitely goes up because you have already hold the property for more than one year and now it's on the second year mark and COVID-19, we still don't know whether when it's going to last. And that's why your urgency to sell will goes up and your holding power is going down, right? And as a buyer, you probably will think that, hey, I can buy now. That's why for scenario number two, I put the sellers and the buyers mindset, right? This is the seller, right? Now you will, as a buyer, you will think that, hey, I can buy a property now, right? Because prices will definitely go down because owners now or developers now, they have the urgency to sell, they have to offload the unit and their holding power is getting lesser, right? But here is the thing, you have to understand as a buyer's mindset as well. You are the buyer now and you have to understand one thing, right? The thing is that if the crisis really goes from two years and above, the first thing first you need to understand is, are you also affected by the crisis as well? Are you personally affected, right? The, is, is one of your spouse, so for example, husband and wife, right? Is one of your spouse jobless, right? And more concerned, and, and honestly speaking, you probably will be more concerned about maintaining your lifestyle rather than buying a property investment because you rather, you may not want to increase your liability, right? You may not want to increase your liability as in you buy another property and you have a loan, you know, stuff like that. This may not be your main direction anymore. And the question to you is, will you still buy? Now, of course, having said that, there are definitely, definitely more. Um, uh, I mean, I believe that definitely there are buyers that are ready to buy because they have funds, they have uh, ready funds to come into the market, right? But you also have to understand yourself as just based on, you know, uh, for you personally as ordinary Singaporeans, if you don't have much savings or whatsoever, will you now sell your HDB and buy a private property given the crisis that is two years and more, right? Frankly speaking, you will be more concerned about your livelihood because maybe you might be jobless or one of your spouse might be jobless and buying a property investment or upgrading may not be something that you want to look at. And that's why there are some people who always lose some opportunities there are some people who will take opportunities, right? That is something I want you guys to understand, right? From this, how long will COVID-19 last? And I want to break it down with uh, year one, if it can last lesser than year one, or in sec two years and more, right? This is what are the mind that you will be looking at it, which I want to draw this very interesting thing, the sellers and the buyers mindset for you, right? Now, Question number three, which you don't need to do a poll, but I can probably just see the results of the previous one. How long will COVID-19 last? And let me see what is the results. Show results, right? Okay, we also have 18, 18 votes, right? Okay, so I have a huge number of people who actually highlighted that COVID-19 will last one year, which is 89%, and two years and above, we have 11%, right? So a huge number of people will go to, will believe that COVID-19 will last much le uh, shorter, and definitely there are people that will believe that COVID-19 will last much longer. At the end of the day, I just want to highlight one thing. Huh? Uh, it really depends on you. There is never a right or wrong answer. That's why today is all question based and going through the polls. And I want you guys to go through the questions and ask yourself this thing as a perspective from a buyer to understand. Because these are the questions that you will ask yourself at the end of the day before you want to buy a property, right? You will think first, will I, will the property prices drop? 
will COVID-19 uh, last shorter or longer? And this last question is what is your holding power, right? What is your holding power? And I think this is really very important, right? And now this is question three. What I want to share is what is your holding power and looking into the perspective that if you want to buy today, you must really look into what is your safety net and what is your reserve funds, right? At the end of the day, you must be comfortable with what you are buying, right? So look at it, your financial uh, holding power, your safety net, right? I just want to do a very simple calculation so that you guys will understand where I'm coming from, right? Now for this, for example, husband, if you are earning, you are 35 years old and you are earning $5,000 and the wife uh, owning also $5,000 and both of you are 35 years old, right? Just a simple calculation in terms of CPF ordinary account, you will be having $1,050 from a CPF OA, wife also $1,050, total you have $2,100 uh, in terms of your CPF. That means looking into aspect that both of you are working, right? And you have $2,100 in terms of CPF coming into your ordinary account, which you can use to pay for your property, right? So we talk about if let's say you guys are looking to buy a private property resale for upgrading, you sell a HDB, you want to buy a private for own stay, right? Let's say you are talking about buying a $1.3 million property, right? Uh, your monthly installment will be $3,600, right? And uh, to top up, meaning to say because your monthly installment is 75% loan of 1.3 million, uh, uh, then I'll break it down for 30 years loan tenure based on 2% interest rate. Your monthly installment is actually $3,600, right? So $3,600 minus $2,001, which is your CPF ordinary account if both of you are working, you have to top up $1,500 per month, right? So this is your safety net. If you have a reserve funds, of $60,000. So if you do your calculations and after buying a property of 1.3 million, you still have some funds as reserve, which is $60,000. So you have to calculate that this 60,000 divided by $1,500 uh, because you need to top up can last you for three years and three months, All right? So this is what I mean by a safety net. So if you have this safety net and you calculate yourself, for example, that, hey, you know, I can last these three years and three months, and if you feel very comfortable, right, then of course, by all means, then depends on you whether you want to buy or you don't want to buy, right? And especially if you believe that if you are the one that, you know, you, you just now, you highlighted that I believe COVID-19 will last one year or below, then and you have already done your numbers and you feel that I can tie through three years, then of course, by all means, if you feel that you are safe enough if you want to buy a property and you feel that today I'm buying at a property that 1.3 and I feel that is a good buy, then it's really up to you, right? Because you have already worked out your numbers. So I give you one scenario. If let's say one spouse is jobless and you're buying a resale property, right? Same if you buy a 1.3 million, your monthly installment is still the same. Now, now the top up around is only $1,050 because the CPF ordinary account only at $1,050 because the other one party is not working, right? And now you have to top up $2,500 over dollars per month, right? And same, your reserve fast is $60,000 and now is reduced to one year and nine months. So that's why I feel that this is extremely important for you guys to work it out and understand whether how long can you last? What is your safety net? You know, stuff like that, right? Of course, I'm talking about this if you are buying a resale property because resale is full loan. Now, if you are looking to buy a new launch, which is a 1.3 million, this is the calculation, right? Your monthly installment is around 2,000, I'm sorry, 240, you know, then slowly it progress to 700 plus, 900 plus, you know, 1,002, then 1,004, 1,006, and subsequently when TOP, it will be 2,800 and the full loan will only start after one year after the TOP period. And let's say same one person is jobless, right? You only can have this $1,050 to pay and now you don't have. So this $1,050, you can tie through all the way to this period of time. Subsequently from here, then you, of course, you're going to top up. So this is what I mean that you have to work out what properties you are buying. Are you buying a resale? Are you buying a new launch? And the safety net, the reserve funds that you have, you need to look into it, which I feel that this is important, right? So um, 
I probably I'll just want to summarize this whole uh, Facebook Live episode, right? And first thing first, before you want to buy a property as in today, the questions that we went through are these few questions, right? How much price will drop? Because I know that this is definitely how a buyer will think in today's market, especially if you want to buy a property. You will look at it. If I buy at this price point, right, will property price drop even further? Or probably, you know, I do should not buy now. I wait for prices to drop even further before I go in, right? So this is, honestly speaking, this is a huge question mark. We really don't know. And that's why I think you have to ask yourself this question. Am I buying at the right price? Am I doing the survey comparison and understand it? Eh, if I'm buying this price, is it a comfortable price to enter? So these are things that you really need to work it out and understand, right? At the end of the day, you must feel comfortable because once a decision is made, then don't think so much about it because I have people who bought properties. I've seen people who bought properties and at the end of the day, they think a lot, you know, and, and, and probably they don't feel comfortable. So once you make a decision, don't think too much. Just feel comfortable with what you purchase, right? And also, it depends on whether you're buying for own stay or you're buying for investment. That is important. The second question you need to ask yourself, especially during this period of time, is how long do you think COVID-19 will last? If you feel that COVID-19 will last one year and you think that now probably it presents a good opportunity for you to buy because after this COVID-19, if government really sees and really slows down the measures and people can go out, you know, function the daily lives normally and prices will probably go up and then you think that this is a good opportunity, then I think that you should start to look as well. But of course, if you are someone that just now you actually think that market is really very bad, you know, COVID-19 will last two years and much more longer, then of course, by more means, if you don't feel comfortable buying, then don't buy, right? This is important. Right? That's why I say that you have to feel how, what, you, what you think. That's why these are the questions that you need to ask yourself before you make a purchase. Right? And lastly, look into your financial safety net. Now, if you are someone that you probably don't have much safety net, that means you don't have a lot of huge reserve funds and you think that it's very difficult for you to make. You know, if you buy today, then tomorrow you need to eat roti prata, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? That means you don't have much funds, then don't buy. Seriously, because if you do such things, then it can be very dangerous for you. And at the end of the day, it's a decision made by yourself, right? So if you think that you don't have the safety net, then please don't make a decision to buy now, right? You will have a lot of opportunities for you to do so, right? So, but of course, if you think that, hey, you know, financially, I have a huge safety net, I can last and you think that COVID-19 will probably just end within one year and you think that, hey, now I should buy then that is where how you look at it. So these are three things that you really need to ask yourself. And that's why I say, think through all these questions and then you decide whether you should buy or you should not buy. This is really very important because I don't know how to emphasize this much, much more because at the end, the decision is yours. So you have to be careful, right? Of course, out there, you have your friends that, you know, I've... I've, I've seen people who will tell me, hey, you know, my friends are telling me the market is extremely bad. Uh, people are jobless, you know, stuff. Companies are retrenching people, you know, stuff like that. And of course, you'll be affected by these type of news. And then on the other hand, you also seen some, some uh, the other part of the news saying that, hey, it's a good time to buy, you know, stuff like that. So you have to balance it up because you will hear a lot of things, especially the news articles that I showed to you. You will see all the different articles, right? So you have to make a decision by yourself, right? Whatever the case, make a decision that you're comfortable for you and your family. At the end of the day, uh, if once you think that this is right, just do it. If you think it's wrong, then don't do it. That's why, I going, I, that's why today this episode is really going through all these questions that you have to ask. I don't have an answer for you guys because I cannot tell you that property prices will definitely drop, it will definitely increase. Right? Or I, can, I don't have the magic ball to tell you that COVID-19 will last for one year. I don't have. But you have to think for yourself. Okay? Right? With that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. And, you know, probably I can... If you guys have any question and answer, you can ask me. And now, um, if you guys probably... I can see your comments as well. And, you know, uh, I hope you guys really enjoy this, uh, this, this, this Facebook Live. 
and help me to like, help me to share, help me to give me more comments and probably you can help me to share with your friends as well. At the end, what I really want to highlight is um, make sure that you are you have done your numbers right, make sure that you have done your analysis right, make sure that you, you feel that the price point you're buying, you feel comfortable. That is important. At the end of the day, uh, only time will tell, right? I always tell my clients, only time will tell whether you make a right decision. In fact, I want to, I want to share another one more slide previously, but I didn't do that. You know, if you really see some of the property prices during the crisis, in the layman crisis, 2007, some people bought at the high peak and it went all the way downwards, right? And then, of course, they hold, they can't sell. And it went back up and they hold for probably seven, eight, nine years. And in fact, the prices went all the way up and they made money out of it. So it really depends on what you're looking at, right? So thank you so much. I see that you guys don't really have much questions and I really hope that this is something that you guys really gives you guys an insight. Uh, go through these questions uh, and if you feel comfortable with what I shared and all these questions, you feel that it's good and you after analyze, you feel, yes, I should proceed, then just proceed to buy. If you feel that, hey, no, my safety net is not there, I think that COVID will last much longer and you don't feel good, you want to watch the time, you want to see whether how much longer and then you make a decision then by all means. At the end of the day, it's really up to you, okay? Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for you guys for giving me the good comments and I hope you guys can give me more likes and shares and comments. And if you guys don't have any more questions, I thank you guys for watching this Facebook Live episode 36. And thank you so much and good night. Bye-bye.